So last night I saw the movie Air, and this movie was such a blast, I loved it. And when you look a little deeper into it, the movie has a lot to say symbolically and thematically about the outcomes of self-belief and ambition. And I want to discuss all of the little symbolic and thematic details throughout this movie. So to break this movie down, we're going to use one overarching theme, believing in greatness. We'll discuss Sonny's loneliness, Sonny's gambling habit, the meaning of Sonny's epic speech at the pitch meeting, why the movie kept closing up on the specific Nike rules, the Martin Luther King story at the bar, Rob misunderstanding the Bruce Springsteen song, why Dolores demanded Jordan be paid royalties on the shoe, and how Nike, Jordan, Sonny, and Dolores are all connected thematically and much more. And if you like this video, please give a thumbs up and a comment. It helps so much. And if you want to see more of these, please make sure to subscribe as well. Let's get started. Theme number one, believing in greatness. The story of this movie revolves around the journey of Sonny Vaccaro, a talent scout at Nike at the time. And Sonny's way of thinking and mindset in this film is what sparks the philosophy of the entire movie. Basketball is the only thing Sonny has. He's always portrayed to be alone during his free time with no close friends or family. His office is a mess and his house is a mess, both littered with basketball VHS tapes. Sonny is obsessed, but this obsession has granted him his own personal greatness. Sonny is someone who likes to bet on himself and take chances. That's his nature. We see in one of the very first scenes of the film, Sonny taking chances gambling at a casino during one of his work trips. But specifically at the casino, we see him betting in two ways. One is a bet on the results of one of the basketball games airing that night. The other is a bet on a game of craps rolling the dice at the table. He loses on the game of craps, but wins on the basketball game. When the situation specifically involves basketball, Sonny's deep feeling of self-belief isn't coming from a place of overconfidence or delusion. It's coming from a place of expertise, his form of greatness. And throughout this film, we see how the philosophy of Nike ties in with the risk-seeking, self-believing mentality of Sonny, and Phil, and Jordan, and even his mother, Dolores. By simply looking at the structure of this movie, we see that specific shots of each of the Nike principles directly align with Sonny's journey. And throughout this video, we'll touch on every one of those rules showcased in the film as it aligns with the story. The film starts with the shot of principle number nine. It won't be pretty. At this point in the film, the odds are stacked against Sonny, and nothing looks very promising or well planned out. He's struggling in every sort of way, considering the state of the company and the stability of his job. But one night at home, Sonny recognizes Michael Jordan's relaxation at the most pivotal moment of the biggest basketball game of his life, when everything depends on him. He also sees a commercial for a tennis racket that is engineered perfectly for the athlete. This together sparks the concept of the Air Jordan shoe design and the philosophy behind it. Sonny is frantic before sharing it with his coworkers, and when he does share it, no one buys into it, not even Phil. So next, we move into principle number three. Perfect results count, not a perfect process. Break the rules, fight the law. At this point, Sonny is fighting against the odds and his opposers by bending some of the ethical rules and guidelines. Sonny learns from George Raveling that Martin Luther King Jr. improvised the second half and the most iconic line of his speech, abandoning a lot of what he had written before in order to win over the crowd that was losing faith in him. This short story becomes the basis of Sonny's mentality when chasing his goal. Sonny decides to forget the rules and guidelines and takes it upon himself to visit the Jordan family at their home and unethically bypass their agent. Fortunately, this unethical visit turns out to be the move that secures a pitch meeting at Nike headquarters. Next, we reach principle number two. We're on offense all the time. At this point, Sonny manages to get just about everyone on his side. He works sleeplessly to put together the most effective possible pitch meeting and shoe design. Then we quickly move on to principle number eight, dangers, with a particular close up on personal ambition. Here, Sonny recognizes the consequences that his personal ambition could have and his slight feelings of self-doubt and fear for the others who are depending on him. And he himself doesn't have a daughter or son depending on him like Rob and so many of his coworkers who have children. Sonny considers whether his self-belief is essentially stemming from some sort of delusion or selfishness. 
And this idea is emphasized in the comedic scene where Rob describes his misinterpretation of the song Born in the USA by Bruce Springsteen. He feels so extremely excited and happy about the tone of the song, but realizes he totally misunderstood the true deeper and much darker message in the lyrics. This comedic story symbolically reflects the possibility that Sonny might be misinterpreting his own self-belief. Next, we move into principle number seven. Your job isn't done until the job is done. Here, Sonny makes his final decisions for the structure of the pitch meeting with the Jordans. And when the Jordans do finally visit Nike, he executes on this pitch structure as planned. However, when he notices disinterest in Michael and his mother, he decides to abandon the rest of the plan for the meeting and comes up with a brand new layout on the spot. Of course, calling back to the way Martin Luther King abandoned the second half of his iconic speech. In Sonny's speech, he highlights the unmatchable authenticity of Jordan's playing style and abilities. He explains that some things are completely inevitable, like the rise and fall of a superstar athlete and the colossal way of global attention and pressure, but he also mentions how the authenticity of Jordan's game and greatness will outlive and outshine any of his unavoidable human drawbacks or mistakes, and that something as trivial as a shoe design can mean so much more if an authentic and truly great human being is the one wearing them. A shoe is just a shoe until someone steps into it. The self-belief that Sonny has, that Jordan has, and that his mother has, can be transferred over to someone else through an idea. And that idea can be symbolized with the Air Jordan. And finally, we reach principle number 10. If we do the right things, we'll make money damn near automatic. After Sonny waits for what feels like an eternity, he succeeds in signing Michael Jordan. However, Jordan's mother, Dolores, demands that Jordan makes a percentage on every shoe sold. Even though this has never been done in the basketball shoe endorsement business, Dolores believes risks should be taken when dealing with greatness. So much of Dolores' philosophy aligns perfectly with Sonny's philosophy, Michael Jordan's philosophy, and Nike's philosophy. She even says the line earlier in the film, when you say you want something, that's fine and good, but doing something you want is what really counts. This line is simply the expanded version of Nike's slogan, just do it. Dolores is a reflection of her son, as she says over the phone, and the company has also become a reflection of her son. Even when you look at all the Nike principles highlighted in this movie, they all align perfectly with Michael Jordan's game and mentality as a player. It won't be pretty, we're on offense all the time. Your job isn't done until the job is done. When Sonny reports Dolores' counteroffer to Phil, Phil regains a lot of the raw ambition and self-belief that he had when he founded Nike. He accepts the counteroffer. Self-belief is the very first step to your own personal greatness. All right, that's my analysis. Subscribe for weekly videos and please let me know your recommendations. And please let me know your thoughts and ideas around air I would love to discuss. I hope to see you again and thank you so much for watching. See you later.